When you think of lasers, the first thing that comes to your mind is probably a Star Wars lightsaber or a phaser from Star Trek. Truth be told, lasers have always been a hallmark of iconic science fiction movies and comic series, where they are usually portrayed as some kind of mass destruction weapon. But did you know they are an indispensable tool in medicine? And they have transformed the way treatments are performed? Well, as a matter of fact, lasers have been used for various medical procedures such as vision correction, nerve stimulation, dentistry, dermatology, and even cosmetic procedures. Pretty impressive, right? However, one of the medical fields that have benefited the most from lasers is oncology. For several decades now, scientists and medical researchers have been trying to come up with solutions for the serious problem that is cancer. As a result, mortality rates for all cancers have declined every decade due to the cutting-edge diagnosis techniques and treatments. But how is laser technology used to kick cancer's booty? Today, we're going to answer that question. Before we get to that, we need to learn what lasers are and how they work. The word laser is actually an abbreviation for light amplification by stimulated emission of radiation. So a laser is a thin and focused beam of light. You've probably encountered commercially available lasers before. Maybe you use one to watch your cat jump around your living room trying to chase it. Or maybe you've heard someone saying that they had laser hair removal. But how exactly do lasers work? Lasers have three special qualities that distinguish them from regular light emitting objects. The light travels in a single direction. The light consists of one color or wavelength. It's monochromatic. The light waves move parallel, they are coherent. Let's look at the physics behind that. To achieve these three qualities, certain conditions have to be met. Lasers are created because the electrons in the atoms of specific glasses, crystals, or gases absorb energy from an electrical current. This process causes the electrons whizzing around the atoms to go from a low energy orbit to a high energy orbit around the atom's nucleus. When the electron returns to its ground state, the lowest energy state, it releases a photon. When one electron spontaneously emits a photon, it stimulates the electrons around it to do the same thing. The photons released by the excited electrons will all be the same wavelength of light, unlike regular light, which is composed of many different wavelengths. We can get different wavelengths of light from our lasers by changing the excitation medium, which means changing the gas, crystal, or glass. When it comes to cancer treatment, lasers are used to direct a high concentration of light to biological tissue to burn and destroy it. Because all of the light waves in a laser have very similar wavelengths, they can be focused on a very small area with a high level of precision. This procedure includes the use of a flexible tube, an endoscope, that gives access to internal body parts of difficult access, and helps to position the light beam to accurately hit the cancer cells, and this way shrinking or killing the tumor. Lasers can also be used to activate a light-sensitive drug, what we call a photosynthesizing agent, to kill cancer cells. This is called photodynamic therapy, or PVT. The photosynthesizer is put into the patient's bloodstream where the body tissues absorb it. And due to the nature of cancer cells, the drug will stay present in the cancer cells longer than in healthy tissue. The photosynthesizing agent becomes activated when exposed to laser light, triggering a reaction that kills the cancerous cells. To avoid killing the healthy cells, this process needs to be timed carefully to ensure that most of the drug has left the healthy tissue. Dermatologists frequently use PVT to kill skin cancers. 
Additionally, it can be used to treat cancers of the brain, prostate, and pancreas. Lasers can be split into different types, each of them describing the excitation medium used to excite the electrons, whether it is liquid, solid, gas, or an electronic substance. Different excitation mediums will then produce different wavelengths of light. So in medicine, we use different types of lasers to treat cancer. One of those types of lasers is carbon dioxide or CO2 lasers. CO2 lasers can vaporize or cut tissue with minimal bleeding. This means we can target a specific area without damaging the surrounding tissue. Often CO2 lasers are used to burn away abnormal precancerous cells, for example abnormal cells in the cervix in women. Besides cancer, CO2 lasers are also used in the beauty industry for skin resurfacing treatments for wrinkles, age spots, and acne scars. When it comes to argon lasers, they have a very important role in cancer treatment. They are used in different ways, including in colonoscopies to remove precancerous polyps, to stop bleeding during radiation therapy, and to destroy small cancerous growths on the eye or eyelid. In addition, they can be used in combination with photodynamic therapy treatments. Finally, we have ND or YAG lasers which stands for this long name that I just popped on the screen. These lasers can penetrate deeper into the tissues than argon and CO2 lasers, making them great for targeting harder to reach or deeper tissues. NDYAG lasers are among the most commonly used techniques for urgent deobstruction of cancerous growths that block the airways and lungs. This type of laser is also commonly used to treat esophagus and large intestine affecting cancers. After all this, I'm sure you now realized how incredible lasers can be. In fact, we have already mentioned some of the incredible benefits of laser treatment, but in general, they offer high precision and vastly reduce the risk of infection due to the heat they emit, which sterilizes the tissue. They cause less bleeding, swelling, and scarring. They also don't require large incisions, which means we can reduce the injury to surrounding tissue. With a laser, you can make a small incision and focus the light through the small opening. And finally, healing time is often short when compared to other treatments. On the other hand, like any other medical procedure, there are some limitations to laser treatment that must be considered. Laser treatment isn't as widely available as other treatments and can only be performed by specialized medical professionals. It also requires additional safety precautions, like eye protection. Some laser treatments may need to be repeated, as the effects may not be long-lasting or if the tumor was not removed at the first attempt. Despite having a few limitations, it is undeniable that lasers are indeed an incredible incredible versatile technology when it comes to treating cancer. There has been great evolution in laser technology and its use in the medical fields, which shows us great promise for new, improved ways of treatment. So yeah, there is much more to lasers than just being some cool sci-fi weapon or keeping your cat entertained. What other laser uses are you familiar with? Tell me in the comments below. Hit the like button to tell me that you want to see more of these videos and subscribe to this channel so you don't miss the next video. I will see you soon.